Abby with Motor City Nerds, and you guys ready to play What Stupid Thing Did George R. R. Martin Say This Time? I'm sorry, it's just funny at this point, but he did say, he made another statement. Like I said, just be honest with us, George. Just be honest with us. It's all good. So I'm glad for once he was just honest, but it's like, don't, this is the problem with George R. R. Martin. Make sure you subscribe, comment, like, dislike. It really helps me out a lot, and I appreciate it. And it's free, so why not? But, okay. This is how I feel about it. You relish in the fame so much and you love people talking about you and you love going to conventions and you love talking to people. You love this shit, you love it. So when the coin is flipped and your fan base is upset, I think that's the reason that you made the statement that you made. But then once again, I reread it a couple times and I'm like, this could come off as arrogant. I I'm going to read it to you guys and then you tell me what you think. But uh, once again, George R. R. Martin, I, get, I, I, I love your work. I joke around over here. I'm kidding around, but in all when, in all seriousness, I don't think he likes his fan base. I really don't. You tell me what you think about this one because at first I was like, okay, I'm glad that you're being honest. Okay, I'm glad about this, and we'll get into everything. But then I reread it, and like I said, on like the second time, like third time, more. I read it four times. That's my lucky number. It's a thing, whatever. But on the third time, I was like, eh. Could someone read it like this? I'm not saying that I did at first. Obviously, I didn't. But I'm like, I could see where someone would think that. Whatever. Anyway. He went on Idris Elba's podcast, is what he went on, and this is the first part. I love the fans, although I do think Twitter and the internet and social media has brought out a viciousness I never saw in the old days, he says. The love and hate are very close, particularly with comic books or any established franchise. Okay, I feel that, but you didn't have that same energy when you were the number one trending thing. You never said, like, I mean, you, you know what I mean? Like, you, you didn't sit back and have it happen. You were very active in the community and very active in, in interacting with fans and shit. You weren't like Stephen King, which we're going to get to because you bring it up, but you know what I mean? Like, Stephen King actively s steps back. It's because he's afraid of a misery situation, but either way, you know what I mean? He, he was putting himself in the spotlight, so it's like, you don't... I mean, social media was around when you blew up, buddy, and I understand and I agree with you, but this is exactly what I'm talking about, but why is your fandom the worst? I don't know. I'm wondering why. <laughs> but the cool ones were out here, right? Okay. Are you guys ready for this next part? I get Winds of Winter, the sixth book, is late. I can get 100 good comments, but there's still going to be a few fans, which means you're letting it get to you. So you're saying that the majority are good and then the few are negative. So why are you letting that bother you, sir? Um... <laughs> I don't understand. Like, just finish the goddamn book because we love it. Uh, or, or just say you're not going to. We'll get to it. The sixth book is late. I, the sixth book is late. I can get 100 good comments, but there's still going to be a few fans out there who are going to remind me of it on my blog or whatever. I say, Happy Thanksgiving, and they say, Never mind Thanksgiving, where's the book? I understand that can probably be very frustrating. I mean, I, I, I get that, but ignore it and maybe don't have such a big uh, interaction with the fans. This is where Stephen King comes in. You probably de you probably deal with controversy like with James Bond because he's talking to Idris Elba. And if you're upset about that, I'm you're lame. And probably with the Dark Tower, some Stephen King fans were probably vocal. Okay, first and foremost, Dark Tower, we're serving the beam over here. Okay, I was never upset that Idris Elba was cast, but then again, I think Idris Elba can do whatever he wants. I'm sure there were assholes that were upset. And and the thing with okay, here's the thing with Roland of Gilead. Uh, the, the thing with changing his race, which I didn't care about because I think we all knew this isn't going to be the Dark Tower. We all knew that was a disaster from the jump. We were like, what? You just can't put that in one movie. You just can't. And I don't even think you could make it a series. I don't know. That's, it's, so don't bring, don't go dragging the Dark Tower into this, George. George, you don't even get to talk about the Tower. But either way, Dark Tower people, I don't think we were that upset that Idris Elba was cast as Roland. But I would argue that the difference between Roland and... Certain other characters would be that Roland is his look of being looking like Clint Eastwood is a huge part of the book and the character. But I didn't care that Idris Elba was cast because I was like, I don't think this is going to be the, like super close to this story anyway. And I still haven't seen it, and I refuse to watch it. I'm not watching it. Screw that. But I just wanted to bring that up because don't drop the Dark Tower and think that I'm not going to catch it. But he also said. And here's the big part. He also said, he's sorry if you don't, if you only like one thing he's doing, but he loves to, and like I've been saying, just tell the truth, George, make shows, he loves to write, and he loves to do all of these things, and so he's going to do all of them. Good job. Thank you. That's all we ask for, George. That's all we ask for. But here's the problem. It was right after uh, the guy who's creating House of the Dragon. I'm pretty sure he's the main director on it. It was right after he said that he cared about the fans more. 
And that's where you dropped the ball, buddy. Because you didn't say shit. So this guy over here is admitting that he cares about the fan base more than George R. R. Martin. George R. R. Martin don't say shit, and he lets him continue to talk about that because he's like, I have to, I have this weight on my shoulders of doing the show after that, and that's a big deal. And I think that this guy really cares, and that's a big deal. And I, I think, I think that the showrunners from Game of Thrones cared too. But I think that it's very different. Go watch my other videos if you want to hear me explain that. You can go watch my other videos. Uh, whatever. I'm not saying that they're not blame that they shouldn't take blame because they should. They're the showrunners. But there's a lot more factors that go into that than people like to acknowledge. Oh my God! Could you imagine if any other huge thing? I'm trying to think. George Lucas came out and a director was like, I love Star Wars more than George Lucas does. And right in front of him. Like, I'm not saying somebody's not telling the truth. I'm saying that I'm pretty sure you'd go, no, I love it more. I created it. That's my thing. Like, like at least jokingly. You know what I mean? Like, you'd at least semi-defend. If somebody said, I love the Motor City Nerd subscribers more than Abby, I'd be like, <laughs> that's awesome, but no, there's no possible way. But, you know, I would joke around, but it depends on the situation. But it's like, George, George, you were trying to recover from the fucked up statement you made. And then by not saying anything here, you kind of fucked up. Or maybe we're just overanalyzing things. Maybe we're just going too hard on George lately. But I'm just saying, I'm ready to talk about Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon more. Are you guys ready? Because we're going to talk about Rhaenyra and Corlys in my next video. But yeah, no, let me know what you think about what George R. R. Martin has to say about his fans all the time. And I'm I'm like, dude, we love your... Just don't, just stop talking. Just stop talking. Just stop interacting. Like, you can do interviews and shit, but you, you like it, George. And we all know you like it, and that's okay to like it. But don't... Just... Don't lie to us. I don't, this is what I mean. I'm like, tell the truth. And then I'm like, good job, you told the truth. You actually love to, to, to story tell. That's what he said, that he loves to tell stories. He loves storytelling. He loves different mediums of storytelling. And he's going to do all of them. And that's cool. Like, that's fine. But like I said in my original video, don't, don't insult people. And then it's like, it comes off so arrogant and it comes off so condescending. And I'm like, man, dude, like, I, I you were trying to salvage something here. People were pissed. But either way, comes out, somebody comes out and says they love it more than you and they care about, not love it more than you, they care about the fans more than you. You, George. Get it together, bud. I'm trying to look out for you here. I love your world. But I'm happy with Motor City Nerds. Make sure you like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Oh, we're streaming Kingdom Hearts. Let's get back to that.